Hi knitters, uh, welcome back to Our Knits and Pearls. I'm your long lost host, Aro of Aro Knits and Pearls. Um, as always, find my Ravelry Ko-Fi Instagram, Patreon linked in the description below, as well as links to any dyers, bakers, designers that I talk about in today's episode. And first of all, I want to thank you all for all of your patience while I I took some much needed time away. Uh, I wasn't, I didn't think that the holiday season would affect me this badly because it was the second year after my mom's passing um, near Christmas time. So I thought it would be okay. I thought I'd be okay, but um, December hit and it was like, oh no, I'm not. So, and I have gotten sick a couple times. I'm still uh, recovering from a cold. So if you hear me like randomly like stop, like and make a weird whatever, it's because I'm trying to fight back a cough. Um, but you guys have been so patient with me um, as a person and as a maker. So I really, really wanted to get back to recording because I do have a lot to catch you guys up on. Um, I'm planning on recording obviously this episode um, and a few other episodes in really quick succession, succession because there's a lot to catch you up on, including like I need to do a year wrap up for 2022. Um, I need to do a whole bunch of stuff. But anyway, today's episode is about my December in Denver. So to remind you all, because it's been so long, or if you're new, um, hi, I, I spent two weekends of December in Denver with my friend Megan of Kimchi & Co um, to see two of our dyers, our favorite dyers who happen to be friends. Um, they are Allie of Explorer Knits and Bethany of Woolberry Fiber Co. So both those dyers, some of my favorite dyers of all time, were doing in-person studio events, like winter pop-up events. So, um, and it, it was their first, their first available to the public winter pop-up or events at the studio because both of them I was lucky enough to have visited earlier in 2022. I visited the studio and met with the staff and everything and it was so fun. Um, but this was the first one where it would be open to the public for just the general public and I really really wanted to go again. One, to acquire more yarn and two, to support my friends who are doing something new to their business and I really wanted to be part of that and witness it myself. And I'm so glad, I am so glad that Megan and I made it happen for both of us because I think we had an incredible time truly. And I feel like Denver is almost a second home at this point because now I have so many favorite restaurants. <laughs> it's kind of ridiculous um, that we just go back to again and again. Um, but yeah, anyway, December in, ben December in Denver, two weekends in a row. It was magical, magical. Um, but before we get into that, before I forget what I'm wearing, what I'm wearing is my last knit, my last completed knit of 2022. Um, this is the memory sweater by Camellia Fiber Company, Sylvia of uh, Camellia Fiber Company. So I chose to do poofy sleeves. Um, this is not as the pattern was written. The pattern does uh, decrease sleeve shaping. I skipped all that and just did the cinch at the end. Um, because I like that look and um, my mom liked that fit because she worked in a donut shop. She actually ran a donut shop until the day she died. And um, as you know, you can't let long sleeves fall into the donut. So the cinch sleeve she liked because it was tight around her wrist so she didn't have to worry about it getting into food, but it was still really cute. Um, everything about my mom was so cute. Um, so the memory sweater is inspired by the memory of Sylvia. Uh, her mother who passed from complications of Alzheimer's earlier in 2022. So because Sylvia is also a Korean maker um, who lost her mom, I felt a connection when I was working on this um, to the loss of my mom. So uh, it was a very meaningful knit. It was very meditative. It's a pretty small gauge. The main color, it uses uh, two strands of Surrey, uh, two strands of Surrey, so it's a small gauge. Worked, worked on US size six I used to cheat gauge. Um, the contrast bands are regular DK weight, um, but it was very meditative because it's all stockinette, you know? So I was able to think a lot and get a lot of uh, emotional work done while I was working on it. And I, it feels very much like a hug because of the two strands of Surrey, it's very warm, very light. Um, and I think my mom would have tried to steal it from me, definitely for sure, which is a high compliment for a knitter 
at least it was between me and my mom when she wanted to knit and she was like no I think that's mine I think you made it a size too big that's mine so that was um, how that was our language of love um, so uh, before I forget the main color is Murphy's brown bread from Explorer fibers and the band the contrast band is Celtic harp both colorways were part of the her Ireland collection and both colorways as you can see are completely lovely um, this is just a gorgeous neutral with gold yellow and brown speckling I cannot sing high enough praises for holding two strands of Surrey together um, for those of you who are sensitive to Surrey I'm so sorry the only alternative is just using a regular uh, DK weight I guess to have that same gauge um, yeah, I'm sorry. It won't have the same look, obviously, because the halo is from the fuzzy yarn. Uh, but I love mine. I really hope you support this design because 100% of the proceeds for this design goes to Alzheimer's Research, which I thought was very, um, very compassionate of Sylvia to do. Um, and I'm sure her mother would be very proud. Uh, anyway, before I get, you know, I just wanted to tell you guys that before I forget. Um, I'm going to be talking a lot about Allie of Explorer Knits, um, her colorways, obviously. This is all Allie yarn, by the way. Spoiler alert. Um, but before we get to Allie, the first weekend of December in Vent Denver was with Bethany of Woolberry Fiber Co. So, Bethany did Megan and I a solid and let us stay in the studio um, overnight because we wanted to be the first ones in line to receive a goodie bag. So Bethany was offering the first 10 people goodie bags. Um, and Megan and I had made plans and actually like very actionable plans. Like we were on the way to do this. Um, we were going to camp outside. We were going to camp outside for sure. And it was very cold and it was going to be very rainy. And Bethany was like, there is no way you are doing this. This is crazy. You should just sleep inside. So uh, she did us a solid i um, very grateful that she didn't want us to freeze outside of her studio because we would have, we gladly would have been willing to do that. Um, yeah, but it was a very low key event. There was no need for Megan and I to be that extra except for that's my personality. And Megan is such a great uh, wingman for my really extra personality that she's just down for everything. Um, so we were gonna do it, but anyway, we didn't, which is great news for Bethany and us because we didn't die outside of her studio in the freezing cold. Um, but we did receive the goodie bag and I will show you what we received as part of the goodie bag. So first was this project bag featuring a moth design. I always think it's interesting that knitters tend to love the witchy moth motif, but moths are like wool lovers greatest enemy. I do think that's, that's strange and interesting that we do this. Um, but it is cute. It is cute as a project bag. Um, not big enough for my projects cause I do garments, but cute um and there were lots of things hold on i'm gonna dig this sachet out so one of the things that i love the most of this goodie bag is this lavender and cedar sachet and i've had this now for a month and a half and it still smells so strong um i use cedar sachets a lot for my stash um i'm one of the few makers i know that displays um her stash all year round um, that's because one, I live in an urban area, so it's not wooded. Um, so there's less, there's fewer bugs I have to worry about in general. I also live on the second floor of an apartment complex in that urban area. So moths are less of a concern for me. Um, but just in case to be safe, I do use a lot of cedar sachets because they have naturally, um, naturally they smell amazing. And they are also discourage um, any insect activity such as moths, so it's really good to keep it with your stash um, just to help with the longevity, you know, keep it fresh. Um, but that's what I do, and that one smells incredible, oh my gosh. Um, there were lots of goodies. There was this hand and body balm from woolen or Tuft Woolens. This is cinnamon roll scented, and it's incredible. She also included this little vial of removable stitch markers. Cause I always find that sometimes I need these to, to hold on to stuff like stitches, active stitches, whatever have you. And then I can never find any in my home when I know I have a ton. So I'm, I like that she gave us a ton in this little vial and it's so cute and aesthetic, right? 
And also in the goodie bag was this marshmallow kit. Marshmallow kit. So uh, fun fact, Bethany has two children who love, love marshmallows. And I mean, my answer to that is who doesn't love marshmallows, right? Uh, but this is really good to go camping because it comes in a cute little kit and I think it's adorable. I'm actually going camping this weekend. So I'm hoping to bring this and use it. Um, so that'll be fun. Okay, and as part of the goodie bag, of course, there had to be yarn. There had to be yarn. Um, there were two colorways included. What I got was I Smell Snow on Berry Natural. So this is 100% non-superwash merino. Um, she even tells you the micron content. Um, that's 20.5. So micron is like, it's a unit of measurement, obviously, but it's how many fibers are in the span of, I don't know, what is it, like a millimeter? I, I'm not super science-y mathematician. I can talk. Yeah, but um, my friend is a unit of measurement, but it's uh, used to describe like how fine a yarn is um, in terms of like content. So that's what that is. Um, I really like that she includes that detail because there are a lot of more like, nerdy fiber nerds and uh, that would be good for them to know. I am not one of them obviously um, but this colorway I Smell Snow is this beautiful blend of a bluish gray with a pink neutral and it's a seamless blend. I have no idea how Bethany does that. Dyers are so talented and I'm planning on holding this with a mohair, undyed mohair, so that it keeps the colorways and in, color intact, you know? And probably just making a hat with it because it's a single skein. Oh, this would make a really pretty Oslo hat. Mm, yeah, I've been wanting more hats lately, but the problem is I never wanna make them because for those of you who are new to me, I pretty much exclusively only make garments. It's my thing. I just like wearing the things I make and I'm not good with accessories. I tend to take them off all the time, but anyway. The other colorway is Slow Fashion. This is on her Surrey base. So that's 74% uh, Surrey Alpaca, 26% Silk. And it is this gorgeous reddish pink neutral, reddish orangish brownish pink. Does that make sense? Yeah, there's a lot of depth in this color. Oh my God, it's so beautiful. Yeah, really excited about this. Don't know what I'm make with it, but it is so pretty. Ugh, Bethany's so talented. Um, and one last thing as part of that goodie bag was this. So this is the maker. I will put it in the description, but it's this cute little keychain. I might actually use it as a holiday ornament for next year. And so instead of this keychain one, I might put on an ornament hook, but I think it's really cute. And obviously it uses yarn. There's like a velvet yarn, there's a rustic yarn, and then a merino single ply it looks like, but I think it's really cute. Uh, yeah, so that was in the goodie bag. And while we were at the winter market, we got some other non-yarn goodies. Um, all three of my friends. So I went with Megan of Kimchi Co, but we were shopping for our friend Andrea, the knitting PT, because she couldn't be there. So all three of us saw the mugs, Andrea via FaceTime, but we saw the mugs and we all picked this one to take because um, we weren't trying to match up or anything. It's just, this was the cutest color combination. It's that pop of red with minty blue and pink that I think is such a cute modern yet retro color combination for the holidays. Um, so this is from Sovendi Bjorn. Sovend Bjorn. Okay, the last time I tried to pronounce something Scandinavian, I was so wrong. I was so wrong. Um, as, as some of my followers were kind to point out. Um, but I, I I know I was wrong. I knew I was wrong, I said. Anyway, but I will put this in the description and it, there is a website, so I'll link. I'll link so you guys don't have to rely on my horrible pronunciation. Um, but yeah, and oh shoot. No, this was, this was not in the, okay. That's another thing I'll show you in a second. And the other thing I got from the winter market is this candle. Oh my God, it smells so good. Uh, it's the Christmas orange and it is a soy candle. I love candles. If you guys don't know me, I have a million. It's a problem. I just hoard candles. Um, and this one is amazing. There were three candles as part of her winter pop-up and I really had to abstain from getting more because I knew my suitcase was barely gonna have room 
it really anyway but um so the two colorways i got as the win at the winter market i only got two i was good um was this colorway dashing dashing is this beautiful forest green and bethany when she first saw that i, I called dibs on this she was a little bit surprised because she didn't peg me as a green person and i told her i'm normally not but when it comes to like a deep forest green, I am incapable of saying no because I love forest green. It's one of the few colorways of like the shades of green that actually look good next to my skin as an Asian person. Like it can't, greens can bring out like an unflattering gold tone, not even gold, like kind of jaundice tone. Um, but this one, yeah, it looks nice. It looks good. Mm. Actually, that should just be the the video cover photo. Me, just me between yarn. I think it should be that every episode. Anyway, but yeah, the colorway is dashing on her Berry DK base. Berry DK is a hundred percent superwash merino, and um, I got. If you watched my stories while I was at Bethany's, it was me dramatically throwing skeins into my basket because this was the only amount there were literally five skeins of berry decay in the colorway dashing in the entire studio on regular dk base because there was plenty on cashmere dk base but i wanted the regular um i like both of her bases i really do it's just very the cashmere is obviously a couple of dollars more expensive so i was doing everything i could to try and save um, she says after buying so much yarn, I know some of you guys watching are gonna be like, you make no sense. And I will say, yeah, you're right, you're right. Um, <laughs> but anyway, so the other colorway I got, I actually, I had one skein of this colorway already, but on a different base, on a different base, on a different base. Let me explain. So I got this colorway called Homestead on her regular Berry DK base back in the pre-order for Garden Walk. Yeah. Just one skein though, because I needed it for color work. And then when I got that one skein, I looked at it and I was like, oh, this colorway is the perfect warm neutral. I really regret not getting more. And then when she brought it back for her winter pop-up, I was like, oh, well, now we have to make it right. So now we have to get it. And we did. So this is uh, the same colorway Homestead on Berry DK Cashmere. So it is 80, 10, 10. So merino cashmere nylon, 80, 10, 10. And it is, there's definitely a difference in the feel, the hand feel, it's obviously softer thanks to the cashmere content. And there's like the slightest bit of more halo than on a regular DK, uh, her regular DK base. But this is seriously the most perfect warm neutral. And as you can see, it's like pretty much what I'm wearing without the gold speckles. Um, love this shade. And that's why I needed it. I knew I needed it. So I got it. And then another Woolberry purchase. Gosh, where, where did I put those skeins now? Oh, there they are. Okay, so another Woolberry purchase I made way, way back in July was her winter box. So Bethany was offering as part of this winter, or rather last winter, since I'm recording this so late again, sorry, my bad. Um, <laughs> she offered a winter box in which you can choose the base, you could choose how many skeins, and you didn't know what colorways you would get, but it was inspired by like a mood board. So she had several. There was like a berry red one. There was gonna be a jewel tone one. There was gonna be a green, like these are just moods, the color of the moods. So it was jewel tone and then like a foresty scene. I went with the neutral scene and I'm glad that I did. I'm very happy with what I got. Um, and what I was like, gonna show you but I didn't so this is the wool wash that came with that collection um because she does she did include goodies um this is the wool wash that came December frost it uses organic oils um oil uh, like coconut olive and jojoba and rosemary extract and natural fragrances organic aloe vera and lanolin lanolin is a I don't know if it's the proper chemical term to call it a compound or mat material I I'm not a chemist. It's a, it's a something. Lanolin is a something that uh, helps with wool fibers. So it prevents degradation of the wool fibers and keep wool fibers, keeps them intact, but it softens them at the same time. So for 100% wool garments, I highly recommend using lanolin. If you use a blend, 
you don't have to use a you know a fancy wool wash by any means blends tend to be a lot more forgiving but if you are working with 100 percent wool i do recommend using a more organic option um, with lanolin make sure lanolin is in the ingredients um, because that's going to protect your garment for a long time and um, you don't need to wash wool very often. I don't think I've ever washed a sweater after I've blocked it because um, I haven't spilled anything yet. Um, I'm one of those people that doesn't struggle with uh, body odor issues. It's, it's a genetic thing. Um, wool has naturally antibacterial and anti-odor properties to it. So you shouldn't need to wash your sweater very often if you don't have um, you know, a genetic predisposition towards dealing with body odor and things like that. Uh, generally, just wearing your garment and airing it out will be sufficient. Um, but if you want to wash it, if you spill something on it, or if you are someone who struggles with BO, um, like that's totally fine. Just use a wool wash and that way you'll be able to enjoy your nets for a really, really long time. Because I care very much about the longevity of my nets because I, I made them. I made them with my own hands. I spent a lot of time and effort. So that's why I want to just keep mine protected. And that's why using wool wash when you do block or a soak when you block, um, I think it's good to protect those fibers. But that's how I do it. Um, and I don't wash very often because it's not good for the fibers to wash that often. And that's why the lanolin helps protect it. Um, anyway, uh, the winter box also included was another candle. I'm not gonna pop it open now because it's one of those you need like a spoon or knife edge to pop it out. But as you can see, it is uh, campfire coffee scented and um, I smelled it once, it was incredible. I'm going to bring this camping with me as well. So I'm just gonna put it down next to the s'mores kit. And finally, the yarn that was part of the winter box. So the main colorway was this on berry cashmere dk i did spring for the cashmere on this because i figured it's the holidays you know you gotta you gotta treat yourself so i got the cashmere dk base and the colorway is called softly falling it is this beautiful sterling silver um somehow there's a warm tone to the silver and the only explanation i can come up with it is um, magic. I think Bethany uses magic when she dyes yarn and there's the only explanation that makes sense to me as someone who knows nothing about dyeing yarn. Um, but I think it's sound. I think it's sound reasoning. And the other colorway, cause yes, so there was an option to do a Surrey add-on and I'm hoping this year in 2023 she offers a mohair add-on. Just saying, Bethany. Um, but this colorway is called Snowed In and on obviously on her Surrey base. And it is this beautiful, neutral, tan, beige, gray mix. I think the word is grayish now, where it's gray beige. Um, personally, I hate that word, sorry. I'm just gonna say gray beige. It, it doesn't kill me to add the extra syllable instead of saying grayish. Don't like it, not a fan. Don't like the mouth feel, it's not good. Um, but it is so lovely, so lovely. And I am planning on holding it with the yarn it came with, because you can see they go so well together. I think the, the brown tones will give an extra life to the gray. I just, I'm so excited about this combination. I don't know what I'm gonna make with it yet, um, but I'm happy to keep it in my stash and look at it for a really long time because it is so, it's so pretty. It's a perfect neutral gray. And I think neutral grays are hard for me to find because they generally go to, they skew blue and I am not a cool tone person, I'm a warm tone person. So it's really nice to see a warm tone gray get some love and attention. Um, and again, that was part of her winter box collection. I am planning on buying the winter box if she offers it again in 2023 because I'm just so happy with this mystery. Also because I pre-ordered it in July um, by the time it shipped out, I had forgotten about it completely. So it really was a wonderful gift from past RO to December RO. Really was lovely. Okay, that was all the Woolberry. Now we get onto the Explorer Knits and Fibers. And there's a lot to show, a lot to show, because not only was I shopping for myself, as always, of course, uh, I did shop for Andrea. She gave us a shopping list of things to get for her. Um, and I have held on to Andrea's yarn very selfishly and not shipped it 
like a good friend would have. But my shirking of my friend duties is really your benefit because now you get to see some colorways that I didn't get. Um, so thank you to Andrea. Thank you. Let's all thank Andrea right now. Thank you, Andrea. Okay. All right, so she actually got a bunch of single skeins. She did get a couple sweater quantity, but I let Megan ship those early before me because I um, got the same colors in the sweater quantity. So I will show you her single skein collection. I'm putting them in rainbow order because literally as I was getting ready to film this, I realized, oh, they make a rainbow. I don't know if she did that on purpose. I never actually asked her, but it, Andrea, if you didn't do it on purpose, you did a great job because you made a rainbow. Like literally, it's it's Roy G. Biv, y'all. Okay, so we have the red. This is called Red Woods. I know, shocking. No, it's a beautiful color. It's this gorgeous orangey red. Definitely, I mean, in different lights, it looks more red. In different lights, it looks more orange. But you can see how it glows. God, her tonals are incredible. And um, these are all on DK Base, I should tell you. If you have not ordered Ali's yarn before, Ali's DK, EKF's DK, is a little bit thinner than most. This is 274 yards per skein, when I find that the average DK weight is um, 250 yards a skein. So 274 to 250 yards per skein is a pretty big difference. So be aware, this feels heavier than a sport, but definitely lighter than a regular DK. So it's this kind of in between. So if you are using Ali's DK base uh, for the first time or have not yet pegged down your gauge with it before, um, just be aware you might you might really wanna check your gauge as you work because it is thinner than most DKs. So just be aware of it, that's all I'm saying. But it is one of my favorites to use. I really love her DK. Um, then the next colorway is Butternut, Butternut. And the next one is Pollen. So I got Butternut as well because I love this gold tone. Um, golds and greens are difficult, again, because of the Asian skin tone. It can bring out a jaundice tone, but this gold is just dynamite. Oh my gosh, I love it so much. Yeah, I'm, I was really on the fence about getting it because I was like, well, do I need a gold? Am I really gonna wear a gold? But then I kept putting it to my face and I was like, oh yeah, I do need the gold. I need the gold. So I got it as well. Um, but you can see there's a stark difference between butternut, which is a deep gold, and pollen, which is more, I would say, it is definitely a yellow. It's obviously a yellow, but it has a green tone to it. And to compare, like, you see that against my skin tone? Like, it, it, it definitely brings out something more cool than this. Yeah. Um, still beautiful. If you love a yellow, this is a great yellow, but um, as someone who finds yellow a bit difficult to wear with my skin tone, yeah, I, I chose not to get pollen for DK, or uh, for sweater quantity for obvious reasons. And then the colorway fur. Fur is one of my favorite forest greens of all time. I have a sweater in it. I wanted another, so I got another sweater quantity. I'm gonna show you in a bit. But yeah, so fur, fantastic green. One of my favorites of all time. And this colorway, Nightfall. This is a very Andrea color. For those of you who don't know Andrea, she loves blues. She has a lot of blues. Um, and then the last one she got is Snout. Snout. And I am gonna compare with one of my colors that I got. So this is Timber. Timber is obviously a gray tone. And when you look at it by itself, you think there's some purple notes too you would think until you hold it next to snout and you're like, oh no, that's very different, it's very different. Yeah, so um, I would say this is this is a warmer tone. Snout is a warmer tone. Almost brown when you hold it next to, to timber, but you can see the difference. Just like there is a pronounced difference between these guys, even though if you look at butternut by itself, you would think it's a yellow as well, but when you compare it, it's very different. Um, but yeah, so Andrea has her little rainbow and Andrea now that I finally recorded this episode I will ship you your yarn. I'm so sorry for the delay. I am the worst, but here we are I will finally get this to you. I mean at this point I should just hold on to it until I see you in New York um, But that's another thing. I'll talk about in another episode. There's too many things to talk about um, So I've shown you the sweater quantity of timber 
Um, I'm not, well, I'm not showing you the entire sweater quantity. I feel like I get this every week where, or every time I record where someone's like, how do you make a sweater out of two skeins? And it's like, I don't, I just, I can only hold two skeins comfortably. Like you saw with Andrea's, I was just, I was trying to juggle them and I don't want to do that every single second. So I realized the lighting got a little weird. I hope that's not like that. And I'm rambling. Um, <laughs> yeah, I showed you butternut showed you fur and I realize now I can't find one of them. I must have dropped it somewhere, it's fine. Um, very autumnal. And I also got Redwoods as well, because I love this shade, oh my gosh. Yeah, I'll show it to you against my skin. Perfect, perfect. And this colorway is the one I haven't shown you yet. See, see, see what I deal with? I'm just gonna drop them. Okay, this colorway I haven't shown you yet is Nutcracker. So Nutcracker, it was described as like a brownish pink neutral. And the word brown is very off-putting for me because I'm not a brown person. It's one of my absolute no-no colors, generally speaking, just like purple, purple and brown. Um, so I was a little hesitant, but when I saw it in person, I was like, oh, actually it's quite flattering. So it really is, exactly as she described, almost a brownish pink neutral. But I really, really love this shade. I think it's a very um, classy way to wear pink. I've been trying to find more neutral shades that I can wear into the office. Um, and I think this is absolutely that kind of shade where I can gladly wear this to a professional office and feel still very office appropriate, but you know, wearing a hand knit. So in love with this, have zero regrets. All my sweater quantity I got on Ali's DK base. Cause again, I love her DK base. Yes, it is lighter than other DKs, but it's worth checking my gauge while I'm working. If it means I get to work with yarn that I love. And I love Ali's yarn. I love the drape of it. I love the color saturation. It's just all chef's kiss every day working with Ali's yarn. So that's what, what I like. You know, if you have found that you don't like it, that's fine. There's no need to, to tell me you don't like it. You know, like, I, I always think it's so weird when people are just like, that thing you say you love, well, I don't. And I was like, oh, okay, th thanks for sharing. Um, like, yeah, anyway, sorry. I'm just, it was good for me to take a break. It was good for me to take a break. It's been weird. It's been weird here. It's been a weird year, but lots of things are so amazing. And thank you all again for your patience. Um, my December in Denver was so lovely and I had so much fun and I am so glad that so many of you said hi. Um, it really was so, so fun. I ha I am including at the end of the video a clip of Allie coming out with the rest of her team to say, you know, a few words. And um, I don't think I started filming right when she came out because I was trying to put away the knitting I was working on and getting out my phone. So I think I missed the, just a bit of it in the beginning, but you can see Ali, she gets like choked up and she had to like actually stop talking in the beginning because she did tear up when she saw how many people were waiting outside and the event just got bigger and bigger too. And it was such a fun experience to be in a crowd, but nobody was in a bad mood. Everybody was happy. And it's a really amazing feeling to be surrounded by other makers um, who are all there for the same reason. We love Ali's work. We want to support a small maker and we love making in general. So it was just so fun to see all the hand knits and like you could pick out old Explore Knits and Fiber shades. It was really, it was such a great experience. I like, if that is what Rhinebeck feels like, I understand why people go year after year. I am thinking of making this year my first Rhinebeck year. I haven't committed a hundred percent because I have a lot of things I'm trying to accomplish this year as well, but um, fingers crossed that I can make it happen without sacrificing another one of them uh, that I have planned. But anyway, thank you all again for your patience. Um, I'm sorry I disappeared, but I won't apologize for doing it because well, I'm sorry I left without saying anything, but I won't apologize for doing it because it was so necessary for me and I've been able to focus a lot on myself and improving the relationships I have with people in person, as well as um, trying to reestablish my online presence, you know? Um, but it's been great. I'm really happy to be back and I'm really happy to keep making. And I do have more stuff to show you next time, very, very soon. Um, probably I might record right after, I don't know. Anyway, thank you again.
I'm glad uh, you stuck around. Please wait for the little clip of Ali right now. We're gonna be letting the first 30 or so people in at a time. It looks like you already figured out drinks and donuts and all the things. <laughs> Sorry, I'm crying. <laughs> <laughs> So um, we're going to see you guys inside. We just wanted to say hello and so you know who's who. This is Darren. Hi. This is Rachel, Kelly, um, Sorry. Yeah, Meredith, <laughs> Faye, Rachel, and Marissa. Um, <laughs> 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 all right, so so excited to see all of you guys and we'll see you inside. Let's go. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, everybody, here we are. It's a little chaotic. It's a little chaotic. Oh, no, I don't know. And fur on DK. Oh, yeah, I need fur on DK. If we could just put that in my basket. Thank you. Thank you. We have a room with miniatures. Sorry, I'm taking a little video here real quick. Sweatshirts. Sweatshirts. I'm not getting one, but we're getting one for my friend Andrea, the knitting PT, who can't be here because she has children or something gross like that. I'm kidding. And I love your children, Andrea. Yes. Oh my god, I didn't realize there were this many minis. Oh. I'm actually I'm actually thinking about making socks next year. I know it's shocking, but I'm thinking about it. Um it really is just like cram jammed in here. Yes I did.